It's been 10 years since East Timor traumatically won its independence from Indonesia. The parades and speeches are happening in Dili, but for ordinary Timorese villagers, the event is being marked by something far less formal and more unique, a bike race across the country and, for the first time, a travelling movie show. Mm. There's been films in Tedham, but not dubbed, not, yeah. not, not, a, not a major feature a major film, film dubbed into Tedham. Wow. And, you, and you bought your own screen? It's fucking going out backwards. Wait. It says, it says that. It says bottom left. The producer of the film Balabo has created a Tetum version as an anniversary gift to East Timor. And with his son and one of the film's actors, back this way, Tom Wright in tow, John Maynard is acting as chief roadie. I mean, it's a fantastic thing to do. And here at Lahuna, what a place to do it. The film charts the murder of five newsmen at Balabo. <laughs> In itself, a story fairly well known, and now with enough known witnesses to propel a formal murder investigation. But the film's most unique feature is the portrayal of the sixth Australian journalist killed by Indonesian forces, Roger East, virtually forgotten in our history who was murdered two months after the others during the invasion of Dili. Until now, Roger East's life and death had been almost a blank page. For Australian and Timorese alike, the story of East and his murder on the main wharf in Dili is a revelation. And the lack of legal retribution for his death and the others is as perplexing here as it is in Australia. A good question partly answered this week by the AFP, and one that has clearly driven the filmmakers, including producer John Maynard. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of Australian people who never gave up and who are outraged, basically, by the behaviour of their respective governments. And I'm one of them. And this is one way to probably, if not sort of atone it, but at least to shove it up the ones who were uh, who've been so awful about the whole process. It's a sense of indignation that seems to be shared by lead actor and co-producer Anthony LaPaglia in Dili for the Tetum premiere. I have always been Switzerland politically, in public. But, it, it, you know, the six Australian nationals were murdered, that's confirmed. Nothing's been done. Why not? It's, you can say anything you want about the movie. You can take it to any level. There is one clear fact, and nobody's dealing with it. They were murdered. What are you going to do? Since when is it okay and acceptable to murder anyone in cold blood? Six Australians were killed, and six Australians are worthy of a murder investigation. The lack of official interest in East is perhaps not surprising, but what is, is the lack of almost any public scrutiny or attention to his case. I mean, Roger East is the, uh, doesn't appear in the public record uh, at all. In it, at all. No. How do you paint a character I mean, like that? It's one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do. I basically had, um, uh, the first time I tried to do research, you know, I did what everybody does, I put them in Google. In relation to Balabo, zero. In relation to anything, zero. There's maybe 
three photos of the guy. There's, there's like no evidence he ever lived. But this stuff on Roger East is quite interesting to me because no one knows Roger East. Did you, did you know Roger East before no. you ventured into this? No, we didn't. Have you contemplated why the hell nobody knows what happened to Roger East? Uh, we have. And it's just, you know, there have been a lot of things buried. A huge amount of things have been buried. They've been buried for all sorts of reasons. They've been buried for, dare I say, professional jealousy, uh, other events overtaking things, and this is just another death. You know, it's an outrageous uh, oversight and a terrible thing that uh, people haven't really ever discovered this story. Tonight, the main wharf in Dilly Harbour is the setting for a celebration of the 1999 independence vote. Hey! For President Ramos Horta, a colleague and friend of Roger East, it is a bittersweet location. It was here that a lot of ugly things took place since December 7, uh, 75. Here that uh, Roger East was shot and pushed down. Yeah. Scores of East Timorese were also killed here, along with Roger, on the first days of the Indonesian invasion. Ramos Horta has long been troubled by the disappearance of Roger East from the public's consciousness. A man he befriended and encouraged to come to East Timor to set up a new service with him. And we decide to set up the so-called East Timor News Agency, which basically it was a Roger East typewriter. Mm. You know, when we talk about a news agency, you talk about a building, about to, uh, back then, of course, there were no electronic equipment. You had like telex machines. But this was like you were b to be business partners. You were journalists yeah, together. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Has it disturbed you that, that there's been so little interest in him? You, you, you introduced him here. You, you know, yeah. you must have felt some responsibility for him. Oh, yes. I, I felt, uh, felt uh, ever since, uh, feel pretty bad about to... Uh, it was fate that brought him to meet with me. If he had never met me, he would re retire a nice, quiet life in Northern Territory. Yeah, old but, old but versatile. Yeah. For the filmmakers, writing Roger into the script with virtually no public record to draw on was a voyage of discovery into private letters and the scattered memories of dozens of people. It was like actually discovering buried treasure. And it's a bit like that, it's like a bit like raising the Titanic. You know, trying to breathe life into a character who's just been expunged from history. A lot of people, a lot of journalists I talk to, they say well, the main reason for that probably was because he was an independent. And there was not, not a lot of love for independence. He's on the outsider, he's a bit of an outsider. Right? He's an outsider. So when he went missing, it was like... A guy, he's a guy. He's a guy, he's an independent, it doesn't really fit in with the regular stuff uh, can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Wait, 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 no, 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 no. So it's possible, it's possible that they're still alive, right? Is it possible? He may have been a pain to other journalists, but East cracked an incredible story that no one else even came close to. The Indonesians are invading, we have to go. A map. Everyone is retreating. Please, draw me a map of Balabo. For more than two decades, it was broadly accepted that the five newsmen were accidentally killed in crossfire. But remarkably, Roger East got the story and got it right within weeks, detailing how the five had surrendered and were murdered. It seems a simple truth now, 34 years later, but it appears East's account was ignored by both government and, it would seem, much of the media. He got the scoop. First eyewitnesses. It was byline in uh, major Australian newspapers. And yet this story was not uh, accepted, obviously. I mean, no. did it frustrate you that this story was yeah, buried, it, you know? It, it was uh, frustrating because I was naive, thinking that you bring in a professional writer, an Australian, he writes, and particularly being here almost alone, the media would pick up. The story of the murder of the five was buried with Roger as comprehensively as his own story was.
For the filmmakers, part of Roger's story lay buried in the Turismo Hotel, where East lived for the last months of his life and formed a friendship with waiter Joao Pereira Calado. Would you like to join me in a glass of wine? No, no. Please, sit, sit down. And Joao is still serving and gardening at the Turismo 34 years later, still filling in the blanks on East's last days when every other foreigner had left the country or gone to the island of Ata'uru expecting the invasion. Did you talk to Roger then? Why, yeah, did, I, why did he stay when everyone left? He, he said, oh, John, I don't, I don't, Mr. Rosa, why do you go to the Ata'uru? No, 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 no. I like, I come from my country, my place, I want to stay in Dili. I don't go to the, stay in government in Ata'uru. East witnessed the hasty swearing in of the Fretland government in late November. Then it was clear that the end was near for East Timor. So that evening I was chatting with uh, Roger East about to go into the mountains because we were already making preparations uh, for evacuating Dili. You're expecting the invasion, of course. Yes, we expect an invasion. Uh, I told Roger, you know, you should leave, you should come with me. What clue do you get to a guy that stays in a town when every other person is leaving? The same guy that ran an anti-Franco newspaper when Franco was in power in Spain. The same guy who was the first, as far as I can tell, white Western journalist to get official permission from the Chinese to go into China and report stuff. He never said how he did it, but he did it. Zhuang is the last witness known to have conversed with East on the night before the invasion. On that night, Roger ordered his dinner. Oh, I like rice and fried needle. Rice and fried needle. Yeah, rice and fried needle. Zhuang says Roger took a phone call from a Fretland leader and then went and packed his bags. Oblivious to any controversy it may cause, Zhuang sticks to his story that Roger emerged to eat his dinner in soldiers' car key and with grenades at his side. Anyone that knew Roger believes it would be totally out of character for him to be armed, but it was hardly an ordinary situation. For what it's worth, I believe Joao gives a totally honest account of that evening even if it is a scenario almost too Hollywood to be pulled off in a film. I mean, that's quite a visual image. I don't think somebody you would, would have loved it if you... If you <laughs> are you kidding? I mean, if I could confirm that, uh, I mean, I would love to walk out of there with like Rambo ready to go, you know. I just think it's funny that I'm thinking of Roger Eason's Rambo, you know, taking on the Indonesians. Uh. Roger left the Turismo with his bags packed at sunset on the 6th of December, shouting, see you later, to Joao. It's a complete mystery where he goes next. After he drove away from the hotel, there are no other witnesses to East's whereabouts until he's seen being dragged bleeding onto the wharf after the Indonesians invaded the next day. The film largely speculates about how and where East was captured. If there's any chance of prosecuting East's murderers, there are still many blanks to be filled in. Local journalist Jose Bello believes he may know what happened to East in those critical hours.
So now we are right in front of this park, in front of the Hotel Timor. Jose believes Roger may have been captured in an apartment near this park with members of the Bonaparte family. Rosa Bonaparte, or Rosa Muki as she was known, and her brother were prominent Fretland members and both were killed during the initial invasion. Bello believes East went to their apartment when he left the Turismo. And some people said that they were killed here and buried somewhere around here and some other people that they were taken from here into the wharf. When he walked out of his hotel on the evening of the 6th, there would have been few options for Roger East. The Indonesian army killed them. His main contact in Dili had been Ramos Horta, but on the 4th of December, Horta had left East Timor to lobby at the UN. I want justice for those five young men. Roger East was totally oblivious to danger. He was a seasoned journalist. He's not uh, young, he was uh, in his uh, 50s, uh, 50, yeah, about 50 at that time. So he had been uh, all over the world, and uh, so there is no way that he was uh, naive. He was just very committed, very motivated, and uh, living was not at all a consideration for him. Roger had few other contacts in Dili, but Joao remembers two who often came, particularly in the final days, Rosa and Bernardino Bonaparte. Rosa was a member of the Fretland Central Committee, as was Bernardino, or Gonset, which was his code name, who worked closely with Ramos Horta. Because uh, Gonset uh, Bonaparte uh, was working with me in Fretlin as one of the media uh, person. Uh -huh. The, the uh, Bonaparte. Bonaparte. So he was very close to he the. He was very close Bonaparte. to Bonaparte family. So you might be right, just then, huh? huh? I don't know. In a crisis, it would make sense for Roger to head to the home of his best contact in town, Bernardino from the media unit. It would seem it was an unfortunate address to head to known to house Fretland leaders and marked out by the Indonesians for attack. Julio Alvaro was a Fretland military commander in Dili when the Indonesians attacked on December 7. He believes Roger was captured at this apartment block home to Rosa and Bernardino, as well as other members of the Fretland Central Committee. It was the Indonesians' first target as they swept into Dili at dawn. Julio was captured and imprisoned by the Indonesians for three years. His long-term cellmate, now dead, was the sole survivor of the group captured here. Jorge Tomás Carapinha. Jorge Tomás Carapinha. And Carapinha gave him the account of Roger and the others being captured here dragged to a nearby park opposite the wharf where other witnesses take up the story. Jose and Julio may have discovered one more critical piece of the Roger East puzzle, but there's much more to be found. Even 34 years later, there will still be witnesses in the towns and villages of East Timor holding vital details about Roger's death. Those stories may come out now, 
No thanks to any Australian police or officials, or journalists for that matter. No, no, but we're going to run the screen this way. But shaken out, perhaps, by a travelling movie show.